The next thing we're going to do is we're going to uh, open the coil up and uh, prepare to remove the capacitor. Um, if you look at the, uh, the coil and you face the what I call the bottom of the coil towards you and with the uh, contacts to your right you're going to find an access door on the coil box. It's, uh, it's held closed with two little nails at the bottom and they can be a little bit difficult to get to. Uh, that's why I use this really thin bladed uh, flat screwdriver and I wedge it up inside. There's always a little crack here and just give it a little twist or a little pry, either one. Not applying a lot of pressure on this. We lifted that up. We've got the, uh, the nail popped free. Now we can just take the side cutters and pull the nail. Set that aside. I like to reuse those little nails. It's pretty hard to find at the hardware store any nails that small. <clears throat> All right, now we can open up our, our coil box and set our lid off to the side. And just as our drawing, you can see the, Im the imprint of our secondary windings in there. This area here is going to have those two wood blocks. Right in here is going to be our glass uh, insulator. And then clear the, to the far left side of the coil, you're going to have your condenser. To get into this, there's a couple of ways to do it. A lot of times I like to check to make sure there's no electrical connection at all on this side through the wood. And a lot of times you'll find that these finger joints that hold this all together are a little bit loose. And if, if that's loose, and, and we can see this one's wanting to be a little bit loose, just with light pressure on here. So I'll, what I like to do on in this case is just go ahead and pry that side off. remove that that whole side of that coil it's no problem uh, I wouldn't do that if it doesn't move uh, but if it's already loose like this one happened to be um, it's no problem we're going to put that back together with a little glue uh, the the tar will tend to hold it together uh, when we pour a new hot tar in there and uh, we won't have a problem with it but now we can see our Ford capacitor that was clear in on that left side. There's, there's that capacitor. And we want to remove that. So it's real simple to do if you can remove that side of the coil. I'll show another one where uh, if you can't get it off, uh, what we have to do to get the, get the capacitor out is a little bit more difficult, but you can st still get it done. But I take my old screwdriver and I just go down into here. Now looking at that anatomy, we see that there's a wire that's running right up in here somewhere. So you kind of want to be careful of that. And I kind of like to find that. If I can go in here and remove a little tar, find my wire. Okay, now we can see that wire right down there in that connection. You can see my, I found the glass insulator by removing that little bit of tar. Now there's another wire that runs from the top of the uh, capacitor up to the points and we kind of want to be careful on that when we're removing it. And we'll be able to find that wire here pretty quick. There it is. There's our wire. And so we're going to remove that tar from around that wire. A lot of times you can take your, your screwdriver and get up underneath that wire and lift it up just very lightly and it helps break the tar away. 
I wouldn't get real hard on that because you don't want to break the wire, but it's not a huge deal if you do. That wire can be replaced. So now is all we have to do is, is to remove that, that old capacitor. And we can simply lift up on the old contact here and remove it. Um, we've got some solder joints there and we'll clean those up after a bit and then just pry in there and we've removed that old capacitor. If the, uh, if the side doesn't come off the coil like we did on the last coil, we've got one here that has really nice and tight joints. We don't have any movement on it. Um, <clears throat> so we don't want to break those loose because you'll probably damage those, those finger joints. So we're going to have to remove that tar, and again, remembering our anatomy of the coil, knowing that the capacitor's going to be up against this wall, we're going to try and, and remove that without doing any damage to the coil. <clears throat> the number one thing I say about rebuilding coils is if you think it's going too slow, slow down. Because you need to have some patience with taking these things apart, or you're going to cause some damage that's irreparable. So we're going to start over here in this corner. And the reason I'm starting in this corner is I know that there's a wire in here. And so I want to locate that wire the first thing I want to do. Okay, I found the wire. And this is the wire that goes to the bottom contact on the coil up to the capacitor. Now I know that there's another wire that comes from the capacitor, from the bottom of the capacitor up to the, point, up to the top points. So I want to locate that wire as well. We're just going to dig in here and remove a little bit more tar. I'm going to locate that wire. We know it's in here somewhere. I'm going to reuse the tar. And so knocking some of that tar out, we can, we can already start to see the top of our old capacitor. But I still haven't located that wire yet. And there it is. It's going to run right up, right up along the top of that, that glass um, insulator. Now if we get underneath that wire, like I mentioned before, and lightly pull up on it, you don't have to get a lot of strength on it, just lightly pull up on it. You can see it really aids in getting the tar removed from the top of this coil, or from the top of this condenser. <clears throat> But I don't don't get hard with it. Just lift it up slightly, and that that wire just breaks that tar loose. All right, we're going to go through here and, and clean up the rest of their tar. I'll get my finish cleaning it all off from the top of that glass, and then down on this side we've got a little bit of tar that's wedged in this corner. And we need to dig some of that out. When you're doing this, make sure you support that coil box in that corner with your thumb. Because you're going to be doing a little prying against that wood. And this wood is pretty brittle. It's 90 years old. So we want to support the wood with our thumb. And then gently pry this, this tar out of there. Kind of dig it out of there. But give it some support. You don't want to pry on this side at all because you have that slip joint for your cover and that'll snap pretty easily. This has no slip joint in it on this side so I always do it from the bottom side. And we'll just dig out, we don't have to dig it all out, just get us a hole started so we can get to the bottom of that capacitor. Now if you look down in here, you can see we've made a little bit of a hole, we can see the bottom of the capacitor and we're gonna just start to pry that capacitor up out of its seat. <clears throat> We've removed as much of the tar as we can from the top. And so now we're going to start to do a little pry. And you want to push down on this and not out. Because if you're pushing out, you'll likely break that piece of wood. Now you can just break your contact off here. Go ahead and lift your old capacitor right out. That's how you remove one from one that doesn't have uh, loose enough finger joints to remove the side. And the old capacitor that are 
uh, that was sitting in there. We've cleaned out a pretty good chunk of that tar and got everything ready to go. So we've got room now to put our replacement capacitor in. We have to remove these old solder joints. So I just use a soldering iron. Uh, this one happens to be an 80 amp iron. Um, I kind of like the 80 amp iron because it, it gets hot enough pretty fast and, and uh, makes it so you don't have to work too long in here. Uh, melts the, the solder fairly fast and we can just put it right on our solder joints and break these loose. And remove that old piece of that capacitor. Do the same thing down here. And we just remove that off of there. All right, after I've removed the, the capacitor, we just clean up our wires here a little bit, and I just take a little sandpaper and clean up the joints a little bit, remove some of that old tar and stuff. Just kind of clean it up on all three points. We're going to, if you break one of these wires, it's not a huge deal. Um, you have to get into the bottom on this side, you have to get into the bottom of uh, this bolt, and this is the bolt that holds the points on. And you can just push on it and pop that out, and you can, you can just solder a new piece of wire onto the top of that bolt. The same thing with on the bottom points. This wire here connects is a solder connection to the bottom points. So that's why it's important when you're removing and installing the nuts that you don't start twisting the bolt. These are little carriage bolts and they fit into that wood and uh, originally they, they never turned in there because they are carriage bolts. But if somebody's over cranked them and, and stripped that area of that wood out, sometimes you'll find one that the connection has been broken. So just, it's just a re-solder. It's simple, simple repair. At this point we're going to install our new capacitor. It's not going to be a permanent installation at this point, but we are going to install it. I want to uh, emphasize that the connection needs to be a very strong physical connection on the capacitor. Um, <clears throat> you don't want to just have a, a simple eye loop or something and then solder it back. The physical connection on the electrical connection needs to be a, a, a good physical connection. So what I do is, is to take this and just take my needle nose pliers and start twisting the two wires together, the one from the capacitor, the one on the coil, and make a good solid tight connection. Now on this side of, of the capacitor, we're going to have to do that to three wires. The one from the capacitor, one going up here to the uh, contact on the secondary, the uh, uh, coil points, and then the one at the bottom from the bottom of the secondary. Okay, at this point we know we have good, good connections to our wires. And we're at a point now where we can actually run some other tests on our coil. But at this point, I want to install some new coil, uh, coil points. And these, these are KW points. Um, you can buy these from the uh, suppliers. There are some differences in them. We'll talk a little bit about those differences. Um, the ones that I'm getting now, I've been buying from Bob's. Uh, I can also get them from Lang's. New in the pack, individual packages like this. You can do a little inspection. You want to inspect that you have a gap in between here and in here on your coil point and you want to make sure that uh, that gap is is roughly about ten thousandths of an inch. It can go five to ten thousandths. I think it's important to make sure that that gap is pretty equal on all your points uh, when you set up 
a, a set to run on your car. But we can see here we got a ten thousandths feeler gauge here, and that just fits in there just really nice. So this one's a pre gapped at about ten thousandths, and, and I've been finding that with the, the points that I've been getting recently. They've been really good quality, and we get. Uh, I, I don't have to mess much with that rivet anymore. Um, the other thing that I'll mention when we open these right new out of the package, when they manufactured these, they used uh, some lubrication on the dies. So when they stamped these out and cut them out, and that lubrication, you can actually kind of feel it on on the surface of these. So I like to clean these up a little bit before we install them. Um, when I clean them up, I use uh, just some basic paint thinner that you get at the hardware store. And we're going to reinstall everything here. The first thing you do is you put the, the bridge supports on there for your upper points. And as we notice, when I do that, I take a look here and I see that at some point somebody has really tightened down on that nut and they put an impression, they, they pushed that bridge point into the wood and, and left an impression on that. Well, that's going to create a little bit of a problem for us as we go to put this coil back together because it's not going to allow the points to sit flat on the uh, coil because that's pushed down so it's going to pull the points up on the top the bottom are going to sit level so the points themselves won't make properly so to fix that we take a little brass washer um, you can actually buy these from the vendors um, they're kind of an odd size that fit over here it's a millimeter size I believe it was 10 millimeter or something you can buy them also to uh, replace and you see that those those drop down into those impressions and fill that wood that's been impressed in and now we can set those posts on there and then we can install our points do the bottom one first is I want to put this on the tester and make sure we have a good connection before I solder everything up make sure that our uh, I don't have an open in the secondary that doesn't show up on on the uh, uh, multimeter tester um, we want to make sure that we have uh, a good coil here to use before we go ahead and solder everything in and, and spend the money on fixing this coil up and we're at a point now where if it doesn't work we can remove the, the pieces that we're using and use them on another coil and we'll, we'll center this on this post here, this, the hole on the upper points, I just center it on there and then tighten these down snugly. You don't have to get Superman tight on these, just snug them up. So the top point is installed. <clears throat> At this point you can install uh, one, just one nut. There's two that goes on here, but we're just going to do one for now and we can pull down a little bit of tension on that um, upper point and then we can go ahead and line up our if you look in here we can line up our points so that the top and bottom points actually mate and make a hundred percent contact all the way around Okay, I've tightened up the bottom points and I've lined them up with the top point. So we can see here that we've got a full all the way around. Uh, it's not halfway meeting halfway. It makes 100% contact with the top point. So our points are, are totally flush with each We're other. We're going to make sure that our points uh, have free movement. So up, upper and lower points, when I move this up and down, we want to inspect inside here and make sure that the top point is also following down and, and moving freely. We've got quite a bit of gap in this and we need to need to adjust this down so that we have about oh, 30 thousandths, a 30 thousandths gap uh, between our upper and lower points. That's going to be pretty close. We're going to look at it there. And we're well, maybe a little bit more, maybe 32 thousandths, but we're 
We're right at it. We're real, real close. It's not a critical adjustment at this point. But we do, do want to make sure we have this critical adjustment on the upper points that the, there's free movement of that upper point on that cushion spring. Tootsie and then 